Augments are super duper important in TFT and in a given patch, we do not have time to watch or play every single augment. So we have to look at the data. That's gonna be the best way to do it. How do you do that? So you can go to any data site. I'm using teamfight.lol. This is a site I've been working on for a while. It's nowhere near complete, so it's not like ready yet. But one thing you can do is just check out how each augment does based on their average placements whenever they're picked. So right now we're in master plus. It's only like a 50K sample size. That's not really big at all. That's very small. And the reason why is because they just came out with a B patch. But as you go lower and lower in ratings and typically around like gold and platinum, I think always have the most games, you get a much bigger sample size. So if we go to diamond, we get like 600,000 games. If we go to platinum, uh, it's around a million and a half. And then gold, I think has like 3 million games. So a lot of times augment guides will only go over what's working at like the highest ratings, but a lot of times that's just not relevant to you. So you should generally be looking at what performs best in your respective rating. And keep in mind, a lot of times the same things that are good in high ratings are good in lower ratings, but that's not always the case. So we see that already with like Void being very incredibly good at gold. But when we go to Diamond, Void is kind of nowhere to be found. But the way I play, if you watch me play or if you watch other good players play, right now the probably the best stats you could get is in Diamond. Uh, Master Plus doesn't have enough data, so around Diamond, that's where a lot of people like started out in the new set. All the people who were Challenger, Grandmaster, and Master all demoted to Diamond 4 at the start of the set. Uh, this is where you're going to get like the bulk of the data for like the majority of like the high intensive players. But if you are silver, bronze, platinum, whatever, just click whichever rating you are and that's going to be giving you the best sample. But while we're here, let's just go into some of the best augments. I'm going to do diamond because uh, I think that's where most of the intensive players are kind of playing. And here we can sort by overall average placement, either from top to bottom. Okay, apparently don't take final reserves in battle ready. But you could also sort by how they perform based on when you pick them. So the most important thing for me is what happens at stage 2-1. That kind of defines the rest of your game. Every other augment you pick after that, the stage 3 and 4 augment, uh, they're not as important to data check because uh, you need to pick what's just good for your team. So let's sort by stage 4, for example. You can't say, oh, I'm going sorcerers, but like... I have the option between Sorcerer Heart and Gunner Heart, but Gunner Heart performs 3.94, Sorcerer Heart performs at 4.33. Let me pick the Gunner one, even though I'm like clearly forcing Sorcerers, right? So uh, data is super important on stage two one. So we're gonna focus on that uh, for this entire video. Obviously you could compare things in stage three and four, but it's not gonna be as important. And also keep in mind how often people are picking something. So the lower the sample size, the less reliable it is. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's like what happened, right? But you just have to sometimes take it with a grain of salt. I'd say if you have around like a million games, that's going to be the best time to kind of check everything. But right now in Master Plus and Diamond, we're not quite there yet. Maybe after like another day of people playing on the new patch, because it did just come out, uh, they'll reach a million eventually. So let's start up with some of the top ones. What the Forge is just really broken right now because they fix a bug with it and it's just incredibly powerful. There are just so many things you could do with it and all the items are good. Essentially, a Orn item or a artifact item is worth around 1.5 regular items. And on average, prismatic augments give two and a half items. You could see stuff like the impenetrable bulwark. This one gives you a bramble vest, dragon claw, and a giant spelt. Uh, so it gives around two and a half items. So as long as you have more than five items, what the forge is gonna be worth it. And over the course of a game, you're gonna get that amount. Obviously, what the forge also has the added benefit of gaining 160 health per equipped artifact. So that is just an added bonus to it. So super strong right now. Shimmering Inventors, pretty decent right now because Jace is going to be actually a viable unit. So one of the Piltover units actually does do something. That's why it's probably higher up. Sorcerer Crown, just generically good right now because Silco is super powerful. Uh, same thing with Bruiser. Bruiser, you could either do like a Silco Bruiser comp, which are pretty decent, or you could just do like the typical Bruiser build, which is six Bruisers with Rek'Sai carry. Pretty decent there. Uh, and I've even seen people do like Cho'Gath reroll with this. It's not like the craziest thing ever, but it's pretty decent. Same with Bruiser Heart. Uh, all these like Hearts, Crowns, and what's the last one called? Crests. They're generally within the same power level. It depends on whether the trait is good or not. There are obviously some exceptions, like sometimes a crown gives you a full item for some traits versus other traits they give you half an item so there's definitely going to be a big power dynamic there and sometimes with something like rogue 
Rogue Crown makes a unit have like an insane ability. Being able to get a Edge of Knight built into their kit and jumping to the back line is incredible for champions like Darius, for example. So if you're doing like a Rogue Darius, he's gonna be an absolute monster. But if you have a Rogue Heart, probably not gonna do as much. It just gives you a plus one rogue trait, which doesn't really help you at all. So sometimes it depends on whether the trait's good or not on a specific patch. Sometimes it depends if the emblem is actually usable on a lot of the champions in the current set. Um, but other stuff that's good, Noxus is always pretty decent if you can win streak with it early. Normally there's some bias to the data. So Noxus Crest, for example, you would only take this if you get a good Noxus start, right? So obviously on stage two, it's going to be pretty good because people are only going to be picking this when... Uh, they have good Noxus starts. Compare to this, like, it gets worse at stage 3 and stage 4. Not that it's, like, extremely bad at those other stages. It's just that at this particular point in time, if you do get that third Noxus and you're able to snowball the game with it, you get a lot of Noxus stacks and you kind of build your team up. Uh, Binary Airdrop's interesting. This one's actually doing pretty well according to the data. I'm, I'm actually surprised by this because this one's a little tricky to use and it hasn't really been that great in previous sets. I'd have to see someone play a game of this to really understand, like, in depth on how powerful it actually is but i'm guessing since they remove support items from the craftable items uh, all your items are now carry items so needing additional carries right now means that binary airdrops a little bit more valuable that's that would be my guess at least and spreading out the items is going to get you a lot more itemized carries because they're like a lot more carry units in the game and carry items are better if you have more of them rather than one of them so in the past you typically get like six items per game so you get like three tank items, three damage items. And if you are able to survive in the later stages, such as stage five and stage six, you get like maybe three additional items that you could itemize a secondary carry with. So in those cases, you would be able to only itemize three people because you have around nine items. But with binary airdrop, you could itemize four people, which is obviously a lot better. I think they also changed the tailoring a little bit of binary airdrop from what I heard before, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. Lastly, a support item in previous sets such as Shroud of Stillness works really well if you only have one copy on one unit. And having additional support items kind of like diminishes the value a little bit. Like having two Shrouds of Stillness doesn't really do that much more than the first one. Having three of them kind of redundant at that point. But going from one damage item to three damage items has like huge implications because all the items kind of like synergize with each other. So it becomes a lot better the more items you have. But that's my best guess on why Binary is really good right now. Uh, Vampiric Blades, still pretty decent if you get like a good Rogue start. Rogues did get nerfed a bit, but they're still playable. It's just Kiana got hit a bunch. Uh, Overcharged Mana Buff, just another Sorc trait, really good. Next one we're going to go over is Gunner Crown. Gunner Crown, it's good with the Aphelios builds. Aphelios is really popular right now. If you checked out my meta snapshot, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta, I did like a quick update and we'll do like a full update, I think on Tuesday. Uh, Gunners. Aphelios is just really good. Like Aphelios, Silco, and Kaisa, those are going to be the main four cost carries right now. Obviously, you could play other stuff too, but those would be like my main three trifecta right now. Void, still decent if you could get to eight Void. It's really good on regions where you can get additional traits. So if you can get on like uh, Placidium Library, Void Crest is incredibly good. If you get like Dreaming Pool, where you guaranteed get yourself a Belveth later on, also extremely good there. So pick this one in situations where you kind of, where you kind of get even more extra traits in order to hit the vertical void, uh, preferably eight void. Sword card, don't need to explain that one. Gifts from the Fallen, always just a generic solid combat augment. Rising Infamy, Bilge Waters did get nerfed, but it's like a decent econ augment. Titanic Strength, Bruisers are just good right now. Uh, Gunner Hard, same thing before. Petricite Shackles, so I've seen a lot of good like vertical Demacia builds and if you get like very specifically tailored Demacia augments, I think it's pretty powerful. If you do not get anything special for Demacia, I think they're pretty average. So they're kind of like mid A tier. And then if you get something really good for it, then it becomes like A plus or even S minus. But I'd say Demacia, they're actually in like a perfect state right now. They're like average, nothing crazy. But if you get good games for them, they become really good, which is where like most comps should be, right? Sword Crest, we already went over that. Uh, you can't get late game specialists early. This is one of the bugs that's in the site right now. So obviously like the site isn't completely finished yet. Still working out a couple kinks, but um, I think like in a couple days it should be fixed. Uh, Stable Evolution, really good because Void's good. Ravenous Hunter, this one's actually really solid. Uh, someone on my stream was telling me that it's actually really, really good right now. And I was, I didn't really check because 
because I didn't want to play Ravenous Hunter that game because uh, my items were bad. Uh, but keep in mind with Ravenous Hunter, people only go for this if you get either like a lot of Warwicks at the start before you even like see the augment or if you have perfect items for him. Don't just pick this augment because you see 3.99 and you're like, oh my God, it's so good because 3.99 is really good, right? And then you don't realize that it's only good because people pick it in good spots. Uh, Void Array went over, Impenetrable Bulwark, honestly no clue why this is even that high up. Void Crown's gonna be the last one that we're gonna look up because these are all the ones that are above 4.0, but it's the same as before. Void, if you get very specific starts for it, it's gonna be really good. Let's go into some of the augments you wanna avoid now. So everything else in the middle, they're like pretty average, but at the very bottom, we have a couple of them. So Perfected, Repetition, Adrenaline Rush. Yeah, just don't pick these right now. Juggernauts just aren't in the best spot. Vanquishers, there's no real good like Vanquisher emblem holder. Vanquishers themselves are okay, but in terms of like getting the extra traits, it's kind of like Deadeye in the last set. Deadeye were always really good, but you didn't really need to go that deep into the trait to like really make them work. The units themselves were good, not necessarily the trait. So that's why they're all a little bit lower now. Uh, Bastion Crest, Bastions got nerfed a lot because they changed the way resistances work. Targon Heart, I guarantee you once people figure out better ways to play Targon, it will hopefully rise up a little bit. Uh, after that, we have Freljord. Freljord, they only have like two units now, and it's just Ash and Sejuani. So unless you're specifically playing an Ash comp, you don't really need to use this. Like, And I don't mean Ash comp as in like carry Ash, but I mean like a composition that uses Ash. Uh, Multicaster Soul, like this has always been a joke. Multicaster Soul and uh, Perfected Repetition, always been jokes. They have never been good. Uh, but it might be weird because... There might be a point where buffing them too high might make them like a little uh, too crazy. Rich get richer. I personally always like this augment, but uh, there's just like a small power creep, I believe, that kind of made this fall out of favor. Ixel heart is really hard to play around this because you don't know where the hex is and you don't know what the Ixel bonus is a lot of times before you pick this. So it's just really risky to do. Juggernaut, same thing as before. Strategist soul, I'm actually surprised this one's this low because you do get a decent item and you get a Swain, but uh, this one, yeah, maybe it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, I'm guessing it's because the Azir comps kind of got nerfed a bit, but overall, it, it probably could be a little better. Stellacorn's Blessing, no one really plays Targon. Freljord Soul, same thing as before. Tactician's Tools, this one got power creeped as well. Uh, pretty much a lot of Prismatic Augments just got a lot better and better and this one just kind of fell by the wayside. They're actually gonna buff this to give three spatulas. That's probably like an over buff, you know? I'm not really sure how they should change this because it definitely deserves something. I just don't know what it could be. Caretaker's Ally, this is the one where you level up and gain a tier two champion every time you level up. Uh, this one is like the biggest hit or miss augment ever. And if you get like an amazing unit, yeah, like it's gonna be good, but it's like so risky to do. If you actually look at all the two cost units, you'll notice that you don't really care about a lot of those being three stars. So Caretaker's Ally, unless you want to like purely YOLO it, or if you're like super creative maybe, that'd be the only time to really take this. Uh, Spoils of War, only take this if you have a super jack team. Uh, Cutting Corners is just like a very mediocre or very below average econ augment, and that's going to cover everything 4.75 and below that you should probably avoid. But uh, overall, like... You can use this site, you can use other sites, does not really matter to me. Like obviously like this site is being worked on a lot, so it will be a lot better in the coming weeks. So definitely want to stay tuned for that. But the most important thing, again, as we said before, is like just know what's broken. Like note everything that's like 4.0 and better and know what's horrible. Everything that's like 4.75 and below. And then tailor the augment to your team because that's going to be the most important thing to do at all times. And then also Tailor to your rating, because again, if you're silver, you probably shouldn't be going off diamond plus data, you know? Like, silver is a lot different, and a lot of different things work. Like, as we said before, I've been saying this in previous sets as well, a lot of the vertical traits that have, like, summoned units, they're really good at lower ratings because uh, people can't deal with the spawned unit. For example, you can't even put items on Baron, so how are you supposed to mis-itemized Baron. You literally can't. That's like kind of how these things work. I'm guessing it's the same with a couple other things, but 
Uh, it's not like that important to kind of go deep dive into, but that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully this kind of helps you look at data and also like check out augment stats. Obviously there are like much more advanced things you can do. We will be adding that to this site shortly, but let me know your thoughts on this format of the, of the augment video. Did you like the old format more? Do you like this one? Should I do like a combination of the two? I'm kind of just like experimenting with like different things that people want to see, but let me know down in the comments below and hopefully we could get into it in the next video. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.